the weekend. Probably, well, it's the hottest day of the year yeah. so far. So at any point, if, we, if, we, if we're just dripping on the page, we've just got to just got to plow on. Yeah, we will. We will. <laughs> so, um, really appreciate you coming in today. And um, the, the whole purpose of this is just to kind of look into the exec market, obviously building that exec team, which I'm, I'm sure you've had vast amount of experience of in, in your career. So, first of all, if you don't mind. Can you just give me a bit of an overview of your background to, to, to present day? Yeah, what I would say as well is I think in terms of building an exec team, most of that real experience for me is, is in the last couple of years. Yeah. That was the first MD appointment for me. Yeah. But uh, in terms of background, I guess three key industries I've worked in. I worked in the insurance industry, I once had left education, and uh, did various roles there, ran a call centre, got involved in procurement, things like that. Yeah. Uh, then moved into, uh, I guess, the first uh, building materials adventure, which was with uh, Bellux, the Bellux yeah. company. Ran their operations, uh, not from a manufacturing point of view, but from a very much customer service perspective. Uh, ran that for a period, and was then appointed as their sales director. Yeah. Having never done sales, which uh, yeah. you can query it quite rightly. <laughs> and, um, and, and then came to Vika, uh, just under six years ago as yeah. uh, their sales director and at the start of uh, last year I was fortunate enough to become the MD. Yeah. What in your opinion makes a great exec team? I think there's, a, there's something about the diversity of the, of the group and their experiences. I mean if I take the big exec team we all have worked somewhere else, we've all done more junior roles in, in those places and we've done more senior roles too so I think there's, there's something about that kind of variety of experiences that you can bring to the table. Uh, there's clearly something about how you treat each other as, uh, as a collective and as individuals. Uh, great if you have a good relationship all of the time yeah. uh, and recognise when you're having tougher conversations it's, it's because it matters. How important do you think it is to kind of communicate that company vision for the business? So you know, obviously now at Vika, do, uh, is everybody aware of what kind of message you're sending it out and I'd say how, how important is that um, in any business, yeah, I think I think you can't just land on on vision because I think for some people, um, vision is not something that even when you share it with them that necessarily grabs them or, or is meaningful enough day to day. So I think it's about having something for everybody. I think it's totally about sharing things like the vision, sharing the, the strategy, about, uh, what we're pursuing, some of the goals that we're looking to achieve within that, um, and just being really transparent about how you're performing along the way. But as I said. Vision for some people, you should have an attempt it with everybody, but let's not be naive enough to think that you know, that'll land with every employee. We've got 380. What, what, why do you think some exec teams fail ultimately? What, what, in your opinion, is, I, I know there's probably a vast amount of reasons, but from what you've seen personally, what, why do you think it, it doesn't work? Yeah, I, think, um, I think sometimes ego can be a big, big factor. Yeah. I think sometimes you have an overly dominant member within that team, often they tend to be the, the senior leader within the, yeah. within the exec team, so I think there's something around that. You can naturally end up, I guess, with some degree of complacency, yeah. um, and probably being too far removed from, from the customer and from the reality of, of what's happening there, which is always a fine balance, because I think if I look at our board, you know, on one hand, we probably get told to you know, keep, keep out, keep out of the work, you know, work, yeah. uh, work on the business, not work in the business. Yeah. Um, but you've got that fine balance of you have to really know kind of what, uh, what's happening, both in yeah. terms of your own people and the customer and the market. Okay. So I suppose on that, what, what mistakes have you personally made? Probably don't want to share too many. <laughs> but hopefully there isn't many. But what, what kind of sticks out maybe for you that you look back and think, yeah, that's something I would have probably done a little bit different in hindsight. I think if I, if I take it in this particular role, because I think if you go back over your career, you'll find plenty of mistakes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've got yeah. some pretty severe ones quite yeah. early on. But you, but you learn from them. And that yeah, you do, and, and, and you become a little bit of a caricature of something yeah. as well, you know, in terms of the, the naivety, I guess, in, in, in terms of what you do. I think, um, he says, bear in mind, it's been relatively brief for me so far, kind of 18 months into it, and yeah. we've been dealing with lots of different situations. Um, I think probably the mistake in some ways I think can be if, if some part of that team isn't quite right, how long are you prepared to, to give it yeah. for it to, yeah. to, to be quite right? And I think it's that yeah. it's that balance of um, of kind of giving that opportunity and, and believing that things like the vision and, and the direction will kind of cement it all together 
I think perhaps sometimes that doesn't always happen. So yeah. perhaps acting a little bit quicker on, on certain elements of, of what was around Do you us. think you brought that in now? Is that something you probably look at and think, <laughs> yeah, I do, I do make quicker decisions on something if it's... Yeah, I think, I think generally, you know, yeah, I think generally I make quick decisions on a lot of things. Yeah. I think that the challenge always, of course, with people is that degree of, well, you know, we're here today and you know, sometimes change, whether that be behaviour or, or development of skills, it takes time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think within all of that, you, always, you hope that you know, everybody wants to get it right and get to that right place. So I think yeah, generally I wouldn't kind of procrastinate around decision making. Yeah. I think you know, sometimes there's, I think that, you know, to have the team that we have now, we've made some changes yeah. in recent times, which we probably will talk about, and uh, you know, just see the team getting stronger through those kinds of uh, changes along the way. Yeah, okay. So I suppose, again, with that, with that in mind, when you've got that team in place, or when you bring in somebody to kind of add to that team, what, what are the key kind of characteristics that you would identify as, you know, that, that's what you need? I, 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 no, I appreciate you, know, you, you look at kind of your FD and your, your operations director, and yeah. you need different things from them, but yeah. there's, there's usually a similarity in, in certain instances of the key things that you probably be looking for in every individual that you make. Yeah, yeah, de definitely, and, you, know, you mentioned FD and Ops uh, directly, you know, they both existed within the business uh, you know, when, I, uh, when I took over as the MD. Uh, the big change for us was the um, introduction of the commercial director. Yeah. And I think if I look from that perspective, that was about somebody who had uh, experience away from our sector, really important. Um, right, okay. Equally, they happen to have a sense. Which is, which is unusual. Some yeah, majority would go for similar sectors. You get a lot practice. of that, and, and I think one thing I'd say probably throughout my career, even at, you know, recruiting at, at different levels before I was doing this kind of role, I, I, I tend to favour in different sectors. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. really, I think really all for, yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, so I, I suppose I have to reflect that in my own experience. You know, if yeah. somebody didn't believe that I could transition from insurance into building materials, yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, then who knows what I'd be doing now. So yeah. I think there's, there's something about that, that, that experience, that the kind of the the depth and the breadth of that experience. So again, in fact, he's our commercial director. I mean, he, he's also run kind of big customer service um, operations, uh, change programs, you know, commercially, he been operating at a very high level in, in, uh, in big companies. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you already see in a, in a short space of time, just a, a different way of thinking and, and kind of the caliber uh, of, uh, of the individual. The other key thing, of course, is, is fit. And yeah. you know, fitting into, an existing board and, and you know knowing that those relationships that you know, whilst we might be let's say a little bit disruptive in terms of the opportunity to change it's still about how you do that and yeah and uh, and how we all kind of get along along the way um, so it's 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 largely those kinds of things yeah we all want it in a perfect world we want to be clear that they really really want to come and work for us and and, uh, and our business and yeah yeah you have sometimes been be honest you can interview people who are um, very, very senior, great experience, you don't get a big enough sense that they want to come and work in your business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that matters because you know, all that passion and ownership and, and determination of where you want to go. We've got a, a, an offside strategy day yesterday and uh, yeah, we've, got, we've got some further ambition to that we've already put in place. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I'm guessing when we, when we talk about this next question, these these people will have all the characteristics that we you, you know you just mentioned there, but maybe looking at you know one particular individual or a couple. Obviously, you don't have to mention names. You may want to. It's, it's an insight to you, but I suppose what I, when you look back at some of your key hires that you've made, but maybe the ones that really stand out in terms of you know you don't most you bring them to where you are now. They might they might be there already. What 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 was so good about them and. What made them stand out? Do we mean in the world of exec recruitment? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think um, I don't know if this is answering the question, but I think one of the key things for me was if I take our ops director and our finance director, both of those wanting to continue to be a part of our business with the change that happened in terms of my leadership. So uh, I take the ops director first of all. You know, again, huge experience from from elsewhere, major organisations, major yeah. manufacturing, hugely influential and competent in, in our business and uh, you know ideally you know, he'll be with us until the day he decides it's time to, to no longer work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably the other one which, which was going to be more pressing for us at the time because it was, um, it was 
almost already agreed what was happening, but our FD was due to retire. Yeah. Um, he'd have been gone by now had that have happened. And uh, again, really positively, he came to me with a proposal, um, which was to, to reduce hours and to, to part time to um, support a successor being developed yeah. over a two year period. And again, the absolute level of you know, his business acumen is, is kind of huge. So, you know, sometimes you, your best bit of recruitment is, is keeping the people that you have. And, yeah. and so the FD was a surprise because, you know, I felt he, he was retiring, that was the plan. But he, yeah. like I say, he bought into perhaps the phase the business is at at the moment and, and some of the plans that we've, we've developed. The most recent recruitment I just started to talk about was our commercial director. I've talked yeah. about him a, a little bit. And I guess the next one is is uh, an HR director. So we're out in the market at the moment seeking uh, an HR director, and that's going to be a really critical appointment as well. Yeah. Because you know we, we know the importance of people in, in the agenda we've got in the future, and, uh, and we just want to step up to to take that further. Yeah. Okay. You you touched on it just briefly. That you mentioned kind of that succession planning, and obviously you know the fact that you had somebody in, in the business for. Two, two years I think kind of doing that, that kind of handover I think you know for me personally it's something that I see a lot of owners MDs people at board level almost don't uh, probably spend as much time on that as they probably should do mm. um, how important how key do you think that is you know in any business to make sure that you've got the plan for you know almost future proofing the business to, yeah. you know you can never you can never do that to a yeah to a certain extent, you know, 100%, but yeah. you can put things in place and how, how important is that, do you think? It, it's important, but what I will say is we don't do enough of it either. So, right. you know, you take that example in finance, you know, that is something which, of course, by those people working closer together and, and kind of realisation that yeah. this person was growing and, you know, if they could continue that growth, there'd be that opportunity. Um, so there's that side of it there, but I mean, you know, perhaps in, I guess in terms of my appointment, you know, when I joined Pico nearly six years ago, conversation yeah. I had even before I joined with the, the MD was you know, they were starting to hint a little bit at their future plans and, and suggest that you know, my appointment was, was kind of linked to that, but of course, but it, no guarantees, a huge amount of growth and development that needed to take place. So it's definitely happened in our business, yeah. but it's fair to say, you know, right now, we're still in that place of saying, okay, well, who is our next commercial director? You know, if we do appoint an HR yeah. director, we'll be our next HR director, yeah. etc. So much, much more to do in the business generally on that subject, and, uh, and to the same extent in, in the executive. Okay. What what what's next for you? Obviously, you've made the the, the move, uh, not just kind of in terms of moving business, but you've moved. Yeah, relocated. Relocated yeah. And, and, and and come down to Vika. You know, where do you kind of see the next? three to five years for you have you have you got this plan yourself what in in, in it, it keeping it as concise as possible well yeah obviously. i mean my, my, my plan is is to continue to to lead the vika business locally uh to you know hit the kind of uh, objectives and outcomes we're wanting i say we we had a 2025 strategy that's about to become a 26 27 strategy yeah. and uh and you know, delivering that would be a really, really important part of it. So yeah, yeah I've been right now, I'm new to this. Yeah, I've, yeah. I may have done you know, various things in various uh, businesses and, and uh, over time, but the reality is I've been doing an MD role for coming up to 18 months in very different times. Uh, so I've got a huge amount to, to still learn and uh, grow in the role and, and help us deliver what we want to. Super. Neil, pleasure. Thanks for asking Thank questions today, and I'm, I'll, I'll be honest, that was, that was a, a very hot interview. <laughs> Super, thanks, thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers.